Uh, as Derek said, my name is Nathan Deeren. My wife, Alex, who many of you have probably seen, uh, yeah, that'd be great, um, have seen walking around or have met, uh, wishes she could be here, but she woke up feeling a little ill this morning. Um, so you just get me. Um, but if, you, if we haven't gotten a chance to meet yet, uh, we're fairly new here to River City, uh, like Derek said. We're both originally from here. We grew up going to South Oldham High School, um, and we've just moved back to the area after I finished grad school this summer. Uh, we're a part of that 20-something small group, and we've already made uh, a multitude of wonderful friends here at River City. Uh, and we're so excited to finally plant some roots in a church community. Uh, school, for me at least, was really a time of um, church limbo in a lot of different ways. It was, uh, we were neither here nor there, and so it was really important for us to join a church and to um, uh, become members of a church. But another part of that commitment um, those growing roots was uh, developing a practice of, of regular giving. Now I've heard a lot of testimonies start with the words, I was raised in the church. And uh, this story kind of starts the same way. Both Alex and I's families uh, raised us in a way and, and taught us that giving a regular offering was a key part of Christian life. But wasn't, what wasn't so clear about that was the motivation behind why we were giving. And that's something that we had to learn through time and as we grew as Christians and as adults. And along that path, one of the key things that helped me, at least, was the words of uh, our church founder, John Wesley. Wesley wrote a lot about money, actually, but it was something about his living testimony that uh, really uh, struck me. Uh, Wesley had decided at one point in his life how much money he needed to survive. And he gave everything else, no matter how much money he made, to the poor. Now, he made a lot of money off of uh, the books that he wrote. Uh, they were extremely profitable, but he was able to give all of that away to the poor. And I had heard that about Wesley when I was probably in high school or as a young teenager. And... I thought to myself, wow, that is incredible. That is radical giving. Now, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to give. I don't really know what my parents do, but I've heard that we should shoot for 10% of our income, but this is, this is incredible. This is something that I wanted to do when I grew up, was to, to live like John Wesley. And every time I thought about giving, I thought about Wesley's actions. His actions did more than provide an example of living, though it, it helped me to make sense of Jesus' words, Jesus' commandments, when he said things like, those of you who do not give up everything cannot be my disciples. Wesley made it clear that Jesus' words were not a lofty ideal that were cool to talk about, but weren't really achievable. No, they were a real characterization of Christian life. See, Alex and I's parents were right. Giving is a key part of being a Christian, but we both had to learn that it was so much more than a box to be checked. In a similar way to how the sacraments are of baptism and communion are visible signs of an invisible grace, our regular giving has become a regular reminder of our surrendered lives to Christ. Now, I've always felt strongly against idolizing money, but no matter how much I think I believe that, I still get so worried about financial stability. As many of you have probably been affected by coronavirus one way or another, when it hit, I was about to graduate from grad school, and my plan was to come back to Louisville, get a job in aviation, uh, which was a very secure move. It uh, was a stable job market, uh, and I had a good degree for it. But it seemed like in a matter of days uh, that all began to crumble. Uh, thanks be to God and some, uh, some several other friends, I was able to find a job, but there were about two or three months there 
where my firm stance against the idolization of money was looking a little hypocritical. And I could see the effect on my faith in every other facet of my life as well. You see, our tithe is and was for me a reminder of which God I serve. Right? The God, the triune God, the God of peace, or the God of money and of greed and of security and stability. It's a recognition of God's lordship over our lives. A reminder that in baptism we give up everything to Christ. And a lot of times it's not easy. But I think that's the point. And the times where it's been the hardest to give have also been the times where I feel like I've probably needed it the most. But the flip side of that is understanding giving as a representation of a surrendered life has also allowed some freedom to not give when giving was going to be hurtful for us. And an example of that is when I was in grad school, or just about to start, I was trying to set a budget, and I was thinking about how much I needed to take out in student loans. When Alex and I realized uh, that I was about to take out more in student loans just so I could continue tithing what we were, what we were giving. And, and I realized in that process that um, tithing had grown away from a representation of my surrender to Christ to check in the box again, to doing the thing that I had thought was the Christian thing. And so after a time of discernment and prayer, we decided that it would be uh, best of us as stewards of the situation we were in not to tithe while we were in school. But using that question of motivation, of am I surrendering myself? Am I giving out of a representation of that surrender or am I checking as a box? Still remains a challenge because the spirit of giving shouldn't stop at the offering plate. It includes giving to God all of our time, all of our possessions, all of our plans, all of our gifts, all of our work, all of our thoughts, all of our lives. Acts 2 tells of the first fellowship of believers after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and they gave all their possessions to the poor, so that not one of them had any need. We're thrilled to be a part of this church as members and to continue our commitment to God and to all of you through the giving of a regular tithe. And we encourage uh, you all, and we ask that you keep us accountable to live a life wholly surrendered to God, to move closer daily to Christ's command, to give up everything. And in doing so, I believe that this community, that River City, will grow into the likeness of that church as it's described in Acts 2, continuing the ministry of Christ in the building of God's kingdom. Thanks for letting me share.